In this video, I'm going to give you a few quick tips to help you keep your repeating groups responsive. Uh, so I'm just going to point out some settings that you'll want to keep in mind um, as you're designing this type of element so that it responds well when you view it on any size screen. So I have a repeating group here um, of a list of users. Pretty basic, but we've got a group uh, element here just to create this card look. And I have a few elements for the user in each cell. So I've got a photo for them, some text elements for their name, email, you know, a job title or something like that, and a button. So now if I go over to the responsive view and select my different screen widths, um, just kind of presets here, I can see that the elements don't really respond very well. They all get squished down and it's very illegible. So there are two things that you want to keep in mind. Um, an element's width is very important because that'll affect the elements around it. When you tell Bubble um, to maintain a certain width for an element, that means that the elements around it are going to shift and react um, in some way. The second thing is how you group elements. So when you group um, you know, multiple elements together, Bubble will know what needs to stay together um, so you know, they don't get split up as your page width changes. So the first thing we'll look at here is the width for this image. Obviously the sides are getting cut off, um, which is not what we want. We want to see the whole image. There are a few different width settings that apply to um, all elements available to you, but there's one specifically for image, and that is this one here, to keep the element proportions. When you check that, you can see that bubble resizes the image so that the image can stay proportional within the width of the element um, that's you know being applied when you change the page. So as I expand the page, you can see that the image the image rescales to stay proportional. But you know if we go to the mobile view, that image gets super super tiny in order to maintain um, the that dimension. So we can also try uh, making it a fixed width. So when you have something as a fixed width, that means that bubble will not change the width of the element, no matter what. So as I move my page, you can see that um, image is sticking in place as far as its dimensions go. Okay, other width options you have, and I'll do this with the profile button here, are you can define a minimum width, which means that you can have bubble maintain at least a certain percentage of the element's original width. So this button, if we go back to the builder view here, the original width is 143 pixels. Okay, so I can say, hey bubble, please make sure that this button stays at least 20% of that 143, and it'll tell you here what that actually um, converts to, which is 28 pixels. I can expand this minimum, or I can raise that minimum by dragging, and you can see the numbers going up there, or I can just type here, you know, a new minimum. That means that when my page um, gets smaller, that bubble will not compress the button down any more than 80% of its original width. Okay. Um, if I do fixed width for this one as well, you can see that this is the original width. Fixed width will only set it to the original. It won't um, uh, allow the button to get bigger. Um, if even if it has the room. So I can see here that without a fixed width applied to the button, we're allowing button to expand its width um, so that it fills up more room um, on the line that it's on. If I don't want it to grow like that, I can apply a max width. And I can say, um, please don't go any wider than 100% of its original width. Or maybe I'm okay with it getting um, wider, but maybe I don't want it to go larger than 150%. Once we expand the page, right, well, right now it's uh, falling over into the previous line because now it has the room, but uh, you can see here when I remove the max width, we allow Bubble to uh, expand that width, but if I apply a max, then uh, it'll stop at 150%. Okay, so I'm going to make a couple changes with all of those things in mind to these items here so that we can have our repeating group cell look much better here on a mobile screen. So I'm going to change this image to fix width. I'm also going to group these four text elements here. Okay, and if I go over to responsive, you can see that the group didn't do too much yet, but if I select the group and then apply a fix width, now I've forced those things to come onto the second line because they need that space. They can't have that space up here in the top line. 
Um, I'm also going to make all of the text elements themselves fixed because I want to ultimately have them on their own line. So each one of these text elements are going to be fixed. Okay, and if we go down to the mobile view, we can start to see things compressed there. With this image element, I'm going to have it centered. And the uh, button element, I'm also going to have this centered. Now I can see that uh, the, the, the edges of this group are right at the cell's um, edges as well, and it's a little bit too close for me. So what I'm going to do instead of making the group a fixed width is I'm going to apply a, current, uh, a minimum width so that it's at least, let's do an even 40% there. And by doing that, so I've compressed the group a little bit more, by doing that it has forced these text elements to sit on their own line because uh, there is now no room for two of these texts to be on the same line like that. Okay, And so now we have a much better looking um, repeating group cell here when we're on mobile. If I go over to the de desktop mode, I can see that my design still looks good. Everything's spaced evenly, um, the proportion of the image is good, the width of the button is great. Um, I can even go to a wider screen and you can see everything is reacting properly. And as I go down um, to smaller widths, we have a completely different look that's much more suitable for mobile. And the important things that we needed to adjust were element widths and properly grouping the things that you want to keep together so that bubble doesn't split things up. If you didn't group these, it's possible that you know the image and this name would have been able to stay on one line, but I wanted to make sure that this was pushed underneath the image so that things could be neatly centered. All right, so give this all a shot. Definitely play around with this. A lot of building um, elements to be responsive is a lot of trial and error, but as long as you understand the different um, settings here and what they do, uh, it'll make designing these things a lot easier. Thanks so much for watching.